this lab has several objectives and all of them associated with density. In the first part, you're going to be determining the density of pure water. And then you're going to do in the second part, determine the density of aluminum and then use that information to help you determine the thickness of uh, an aluminum foil. And then in the third part, you're going to be given an unknown solid in the shape of a cylinder and using mass and volume measurements you're supposed to figure out what the identity of the material is using its density. So let's walk through how to do each part of the lab. In part A, in the density of water, all you're going to be doing here is to pour some water into a graduated cylinder and then make the measurement of mass and volume of the water and then use those two values to determine the density of water. Now you're going to do this repeatedly a few times so that you can get an average of the density values because that would help improve the precision of the measurement. Just a quick reminder on how to read an instrument that is not digital like a graduated cylinder you're going to have to determine the size of the markings in the graduated cylinder and then look at the meniscus position of the liquid, which is the lowest position of the liquid in that curved shape of the liquid. And at the end, once you determine what that value is, so for example, in this case, every increment or every mark is one milliliter, that position is 30. You don't just say 30, but you have to add one digit as an estimate and so the position, if it's 30, then you would say it's 30.0 milliliter as the volume. So here's a quick example on how to complete this part of the lab and how to do the calculation. Let's say you collect the mass and volume of the uh, water, and then the other part that you have to do is also measure the temperature of the water at the very end. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples data for the graduated cylinder when it's empty, and then the mass once we fill it up with some water, and then the mass again in the second experiment where we add some water to the existing water that we have. And then at the end, we measure the temperature of the water. So how do we get density from these measurements? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to calculate the mass of the water that you have in each of the experiment. So in the first experiment to get the mass, all you need to do is take the difference between the mass here and then the mass when the graduated cylinder is empty. And that gives me this number right here, 21.287 grams. To get the volume, I do the same thing. I would just look at the volume because I started with zero. So it's just 21.2 minus zero, which is just 21.2 milliliter. And then I would calculate the density by taking the mass over the volume. Keep in mind here, of course, the significant figures of the two measurements. For the mass, I have five significant figures. For the volume, I have three. So my final answer has to have three significant figures. So it becomes 1.00 grams per milliliter. So I'm gonna just repeat the same process with the second experiment. Here I'm gonna take the 85.033, which is the additional water that I've added, and I'm gonna subtract that from the beginning mass again when it's empty. So that gives me 41.798 grams as the mass. Doing the same with the volume gives me 41.8 milliliters. Dividing the mass and the volume gives me the density value. And again, here, after rounding to the appropriate significant figures, I have 1.00 grams per milliliter as my density for the second experiment. Now, to get the average density, what I would do is take the density values from both experiments, which is these are the raw data, which is the data before rounding, and then dividing that by two, since there's two different experiments. If you have three experiments, you would divide this by three. And then you get the average density value, which is given by this number, and then you have to round it to the correct significant figures again. And so that, again, ends up being 1.00. So that's the actual number that you would report to other people because that's the average value. So we do averaging because that improves the precision because we're repeating the experiment a few times to increase our confidence of the value that we get. Now what you need to do at that point is that to compare your experimental measurement, which is 1.00, to the actual density of water that's been published, that's been measured by other people. So in this case, this is where your temperature value becomes useful. We measured the temperature earlier to be 23.6, so we're going to look up this table, which is also given in the lab report um, as a link. What you need to do here is look up 23 
0.6 degrees. So 23 is right here, 0.6 is right here. So then the intersection of those two um, rows and column gives you the actual value of density of water, which is 0.997394. And so what you're going to do now is calculate what we call the percent error of your measurement. So your value of density is this one right here. The theoretical value is this one right here. So you're going to take the difference of those two, get an absolute value of it. That's what the symbol, uh, these little uh, sort of uh, straight line symbols represent. You're just getting the positive number out of that difference, dividing it by the true value or the theoretical value, which is the 0 0.997, 394, and then multiplying by 100%. I put a little red font right here to mark where the significant figure should be. And so once I do all that division, I end up getting 0.46% as my percent error. All right, continuing to part B now, here I'm going to determine the density of aluminum and use it to help me figure out the thickness of an aluminum foil. So in order to determine the density of an object that is irregularly shaped so it doesn't have like a cube shape or cylinder shape or sphere shape you know something where we can actually use formula to calculate the volume the way we're going to do this is we're going to do it by water displacement so all you need to do is you start with the graduated cylinder filled with water up to a certain volume and you're going to read that volume and then you're going to add your solid in there and the solid will add to the volume so then the volume of the water will increase to a different number and you're going to read that again and then subtracting the two volumes will give you the volume of the solid that's been added so here's a quick example a student collects the data get these masses and these volumes in the graduate cylinder the masses can be measured in a uh, balance right and then so to get the mass of the aluminum you need to take the difference between the mass of the container plus the aluminum subtracting from the empty container in this case we use a beaker originally to measure the mass and then that gives me this mass value and then the volume is just the difference between the levels of liquid in the graduate center with and without the aluminum in it and then that gives me 3.2 milliliter density then would just be a mass over volume I make a slight unit conversion right here, which is from milliliter to cubic centimeter. That relationship is a one-to-one -one relationship. One milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. The reason I do that is because density of solids is typically expressed in grams per cubic centimeter. Density of liquids is typically expressed as grams per milliliter. So I just want to make that a unit conversion to reflect that we're calculating the density of a solid here. Okay, so once you have the density of the solid, the second part of this lab, part B, is to use that true density of aluminum to help you calculate the thickness of an aluminum foil. But aluminum foil, if you think about it, it's like a rectangular box, right? It has a length, it has a width, and it has a thickness, but the thickness, of course, is very, very small. So it's very thin, but it does have a thickness. If you have a rectangular box like this, the volume of that rectangular box is always going to be its length times its width times its height or thickness. Right now, with an aluminum foil, that height is very, very small. And that's why it looks like it's a two-dimensional piece of material, but of course, it's still three-dimensional. So the question here is, if we have an aluminum foil that has that length and that width with a certain mass, what's the thickness of the foil? And here you're asked to use the true density of aluminum from this website to help you calculate the thickness. So as I just said, the volume can be expressed as length times width times thickness. So if I do a little algebra to isolate thickness, to put it on one side and put everybody else on the other side of the equal sign, I get thickness equals volume over length times width. So I can calculate thickness if I have volume, I have length, and I have width. Well, I have length, I have width, but I don't have volume. So I need to find the volume. Here's where your density becomes useful because density is equal to mass over volume. So then doing, again, a little algebra, isolating volume on one side and then density and mass on the other side of the equation, I get volume equals mass over density. I was given mass and I can find the density using this website. So this is what I have. I end up getting a volume that's equal to this number right here. Again, this is the calculated number. I put a little red font right there to mark where my significant figure should be, in this case, based on the density that's given. And then the thickness 
is just taking the volume divided by the length times width. Volume is what I have right here on the top. Length and width right here. The units, by the way, cancel out. This is cubic. This is centimeter and another centimeter, so that's square. So cubic divided by square will leave you with just one centimeter left at the end, and that should be the unit of the thickness. Again, I put a little red mark here to indicate where the significant figure should end, so my final answer would be 0 0.220 centimeter for the thickness. All right, the last part of the lab is about using graphical analysis, which is just a fancy word for graphing or plotting, mass and volume data to help you figure out an unknown solid. Here's the background to this. Density is equal to mass over volume. You can rearrange the equation so it looks like mass is the same as density times volume. Well, once you have it in this form, it actually looks like the equation of a line, which is just y equals m times x. Now here, our y is mass, our x is volume, and our m, which is, remember, is the symbol for slope of a line, is density. So in other words, you could find density if you were to plot mass on the y-axis, volume on the x-axis, and calculating the slope of the line that you get. Here's a quick example. I'm gonna use that data that I had from part A earlier, which is the data about the mass and volume of water. And I'm gonna use this method that we just learned on plotting to help figure out the density. Just straight from part A, the data that we got earlier, which is the mass for the first experiment, the volume for the first experiment, the mass from the second, and the volume from the second. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to a graph paper, or in this case, I just use a computer program. You can do either. Graph paper would probably be a little easier and something you're more familiar with. But what you're going to do is graph. On the y-axis, you're going to put mass as your quantity, and then on the x-axis, you're going to put volume. And here, I plotted these two numbers right here. So for the first experiment, I have the mass of 21.287 and volume of 21.2. So that's what that point is. And then that second point is for the second experiment. If you have more points, by the way, and in your actual experiment, you're going to have more points, you're gonna put another point here, another point here, you know, it just depends on where your points actually end up scattering in this plot. Now, if you have more points, let's say you have three points or four points, what you need to do is then draw something called a best fit line. So what a best fit line is, is a line that is passing through all of those points as best as you could, but just one straight line. So it's not a curvy line. It's not a line that kind of have different segments. So it is just one line, one straight line, just like this one right here. But it has to go through those points as closely as you can. So sometimes you can't really get through all the points and that's okay, that's why it's called the best fit line. It doesn't say it's the perfect fit line, it's the best fit, it's what you can draw the best that could fit through all of those points. Once you have the line, what you need to do is calculate the slope of the line. If you remember in math, you learn that the slope of the line can be calculated by taking two different points on the line. So the two different points have coordinates x1, y1, and x2, y2. And the slope can be calculated by taking the difference in the y over the difference in the x. You might see this symbol written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. You still get the same value of slope. So the way I would calculate the slope of this line is I would take the y2 minus y1, which is 41798 minus 21287, over 41.8 minus 21.2. And when I do that, I get my slope. Turns out my slope is this number, 1.0008. So it's written here as a line equation, y is equal to 1.0008x. What I have just found is the density of water using the data that I got. So this really shows you two different ways of finding density. One is using this graphical method, and the other one earlier we were using just calculation in algebra. 
right? Just calculating it out using a formula. And so that's what you're going to be doing for this last part. Instead of water, you're going to be actually working with the cylinders. Uh, the cylinders might look like this, or they might look slightly different. They might have colors with them. The cylinders are made out of different materials. So your goal is to figure out what material your cylinder is made out of. You're going to have different size cylinders. So because they have different sizes, right? A different uh, diameter in the base, you're going to have to measure all of those and then weigh the mass. And then from the mass and the volume of these cylinders, you're going to make your plot. Just a quick reminder that the volume of a cylinder is calculated as pi times r squared times h, where r is the radius of the circular base of the cylinder. And then h is the length or the height of that cylinder, right? And once you get your density, what you should do is look at the values of density that are given here, which is also in your lab procedure, and you can compare them. So for example, if you calculate your density to be, I don't know, 0.75 grams per cubic centimeter, the best choice for your material would be maple in that case, okay?